Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, we are gonna be taking this Mando helmet to the next step. That's right, this is the Villainous Prop Shop Mandalorian, I'm calling it the Viking helmet. If you're interested in picking up one of these for yourself in raw form, go down to the description below. And if you wanna take it to this next level, paint it up, you can find everything I used again in the description below or head over to my website, 3dprintedprops.com and you can sign up to get your free Red Hood helmet or just head over to projects where you'll find a list of everything that I used. Now, in this video, we are gonna be painting, we're gonna be weathering, and we're gonna be adding this very stylish fur to the sides. Uh, this was a really fun one. I had a great time doing a bunch of different techniques and using some new materials. So let's get going behind the fake wall and get started. Okay, so this helmet is all sanded and ready to go. We're gonna do some taping because we're gonna do this in a couple different colors. So I'm using some painter's tape. It doesn't stick to things and that's what we want. But again, you wanna make sure you let things dry properly. Now, I love this stuff. It's actually like pinstriping tape. I get it from like an automotive store and it's vinyl. And what's really cool about it is you can see it really goes around corners really, really well. So especially if you've got something like this, it's got some organic shapes, it's the way to go. And then once you have it there in those areas, you can just go ahead with your painter's tape. And again, I've gone over most of it with the vinyl and then the painter's tape just to finish it up. And this way you're not gonna, you know, get paint in areas in the helmet you don't want. Now I can't stand taping things. So, you know, this one wasn't too, too bad, but I didn't particularly enjoy myself. And I wanna go ahead and give some of these little details some different paint schemes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover this up and then use a knife and trim around it. This way you get a nice clean cut and uh, you can have uh, you know your paint not going where you don't want it. Now, let's go ahead, once we are done taping, take it outside and give it some spray paint. Now this is actually a, um, it's a hammered metal paint. It's a Krylon hammered metal. Go in the description below for links to it. And it's gonna give it that sort of bumpy look, that hammered look. Uh, I wanted this to be more sort of Viking than shiny silver. And you could sort of see that texturing there. And this is the fun part. I hate taping, but I love untaping. You can see that everything's nice and clean. We didn't get paint on it. There are a few little bloops here and there, but we'll fix those later. And the tape came off really, really well and I like how this chrome looks. And you can see here that sort of bumpy look. Now, if it was a little bit more, I'd like it even more, but I'm happy with it. Then we're gonna take some of my favorite paint, this Vallejo paint, and we're gonna start going over the brass sort of chrome area. And what I love about this Vallejo modeling paint is, this is one coat. It's a little bit of water to sort of thin it down a bit, and I don't even give this thing two coats. This stuff covers really, really well. Yes, they're tiny bottles, but as you've seen through a lot of these videos over the past year, uh, I've been using these and I have not refilled them because you add a little water and you get great, great coverage. So I wanted to go with this different two-tone look. I did some research and I looked at some different uh, helmets out there and I really wanted it to have a, a sort of a more distinctive look than your standard sort of like chrome Mando helmet, especially since this was going to be a Viking helmet. And there we go, it is all uh, this hammered steel and this bronzy copper look. And I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. You do see there's a little mistake there, but we'll just go over it with some more silver and fix it up. Now we're gonna go here and get this little piece because I forgot to cover this earlier with the, with the brass paint. And uh, we're just gonna go in there with a brush. It's a little too big, but it already had the brass paint on it. So I went ahead and used it. And again, it's just sort of adding little details to the helmet that help people sort of as they're looking at it and moving their way around, they see these little tiny, you know, these little tiny details. Now here's something really fun. I love doing you know, metals and, and, and really technical looking things, but I love doing organic shapes. So here are these antlers, and if they look a little different from the antlers in the previous video they are, I decided I want to use these instead. And I went ahead and gave them this sort of fleshy bone color, 
And I looked at some references and I noticed that in antlers like this, there's sort of this darkening in the center and then the ridges are more of a sort of a, a, a whitish bone color. So I'm just going in with some more paint that I'm sort of just mixing as I go and I'm adding this brown in here and I'm being sort of sloppy with it. It's kind of like a dry brush, a little bit more than a dry brush really, but you know, so I, I let the brush empty out. Now, it seemed a little harsh, so I went ahead with this new Vallejo, because I'm loving their stuff, Vallejo um, uh, washes, and it's a little bit different than uh, just mixing up some paint, because it's got some really great coverage and sort of sticking power. It, it sort of dyes it a little bit, and and you get some more time to work on it. And you can see here, I just slathered it on, and I'm using a paper towel like I have in other videos when I'm weathering to sort of dab it away. But it needs a little bit more. It needs some more depth to it, so I'm using this, this light brown Vallejo wash, and I'm gonna give it a little bit more depth. Now, you're gonna hear that word a lot in this video. The key thing when you are uh, weathering something is depth, is uh, dimension, especially if it's something natural like this. So we're going ahead and we're adding, you know, this dark brown wash and then this uh, lighter brown wash just to sort of build things up. And you can see I'm wiping away on the edges there because uh, as I saw in some of my um, so in my references, the edges were a little bit lighter, a little bit whiter. I'm going in with a really sort of cut up brush with uh, a lighter bone color. And again, I love that uh, bone paint uh, from Basics. Again, links below. And I'm just hitting these edges and giving it sort of a real natural look. And if it looks a little too harsh, I just rub a little bit away with my finger. Uh, and then this way, I'm getting this really great uh, gradation from like this white to uh, the lighter bone to the dark bone. And you, again, you, the more you build up and the more you can make it look natural with these different textures, the better. Uh, and this is kind of true for when we get to metals, and we'll see that in a second. Uh, because weathering is super fun, but the key thing is just be, you know, relax uh, and play with it, and you're not going to ruin it. I'm sure there's been a couple times in this you've looked at it and said, that looks strange. And now you see that it's starting to come together. It's starting to look like bone. It's starting to look like a more natural uh, piece. And I thought it needed a little bit something else. So this is a sort of a red wash, uh, and this is a Vallejo red wash. And I'm just sort of putting it in certain places, not everywhere, just to add a little bit of color to it. But I thought it needed a little bit more, and I saw this in another video that someone was doing, and I'm actually using these washes, a black wash and then the brown wash, and I'm sort of just like uh, using my finger to have it splatter, to get these little dots in there, to just, again, more natural, uh, more depth, and it really, really has a neat look to it. And then I'm actually going through with a, uh, a an ivory, uh, sort of a bone paint in water and sprinkling it on there too. And you can start to see that it doesn't look fake anymore. It looks like a real, uh, at least uh, something that's a little bit more organic. Now we're going to go ahead and paint those little brassy areas, even though they will be hidden later, you'll see. And I am super, super happy with those. So here's that wash again, but this is a black wash, and you might be saying, oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> I've never used this wash before, so I put way too much on, and I kind of panicked at first as it's running everywhere, but I remembered this is uh, weathering. We are going to be making this look like maybe it was just dug up, or it's definitely been in battle for quite some time, and I'm going to put it on, let it sit for a little bit to sort of darken the, the paint beneath it, and then I'm going in with a paper towel that I've wadded up just to take some off. And this is where it's, you know, really more art than I can't tell you exactly how to do this, um, but the main thing you need to know is when you're weathering is look where dirt would accumulate. Now, it makes sense that it would accumulate in the edges, it would accumulate in those little uh, lines that go across the silver part. Uh, it would accumulate in the lid area, like where that chrome meets the silver, or, or the, the brass meets the silver, because dirt would settle there. So always be thinking, if I left this out, if it was buried, where would dirt accumulate? And that's where you want to add, you know, the majority 
of your weathering. And you can see here, I'm just going to go through here and I'm just going to hit all the surfaces with this black wash. And you might have guessed it, we're going to be adding different colored washes as we go, again, to build up that um, the saturation of it and give it some more depth. I did panic at first when I put this wash down because I had realized that I never used it before, so I didn't really know what it was going to do to the acrylics uh, or the spray paint underneath, and uh, I was lucky it didn't do anything. But you should probably always test something before this, uh, or you could be like, oh no, I just ruined the helmet. And again, you can see I'm just dabbing away. Now, some people use paper towels. Some people use, you know, a wadded up um, clean cloth, like a cotton cloth. Uh, I've seen some people, and I've used uh, natural sponges. Uh, that can get a little bit pricey, uh, or even just like acrylic sp uh, sponges. Uh, I find, you know, a roll of paper towel does the job really, really well. And I can get all the different sort of weird looks that I want now. You can see I'm dabbing. I'm not wiping. If I was wiping, you'd get a really different look. It wouldn't look natural. It'd look more like it was like streaks. Now, if that's what you're going for, you would do wiping. Now, the first time you do this, the first time you do your weathering, trust me, you are going to maybe freak a little bit because <laughs> you've just done this paint job. It might have taken you uh, days in between things drying and then uh, giving it another coat and drying and then another coat. And then you go ahead and just do this to it, put black wash all over everything. But that's okay. If you're looking for this kind of look, if you're looking for a weathered look, you're going to have to do this. And even if you don't go to this extreme, You've seen other helmets I've done. You can look at some of the other videos. There'll be links uh, up in the upper right-hand or left-hand corner. You can see where I've done minor weathering to some helmets. And that minor weathering, again, will give you more of a real look. Now, here we go where we're going to be adding uh, a little bit more uh, color to this. Again, just the straight black. It could, it could look good, but let's put some of this brown wash on here too because it's not just sort of black mud or black dirt this person might be encountering. It could be brown. There could be some uh, reddish brown. Play with you know what you do to see where it would be. And now I'm not going to put this stuff everywhere like I did the black. I'm just going to sort of dab it around like maybe mud got splashed on it uh, or something like that and then dab it away again with the cloth. You can see I'm not switching cloths because I want, you know, a mix of paints be going on this. But I do need a little bit of actual acrylic and I'm putting this on without any water. This is straight black acrylic because there's going to be some areas that, yes, this wash shows up and it's pronounced, but it, it it's a wash. So it isn't a solid pigment. And some areas I want to be super, super dirty, like the deep crevices, the pieces on the side. And for that, I am going to just use straight black acrylic, uh, I'm dabbing it around like that. And again, this area in here, so deep of a crevice, it would be black with gunk. So I'm just going to paint it straight black. So there are times you would do that. And now I realize, you know, I need to really mar the brass up a bit more so i add some straight uh, acrylic to that and i'm just sort of dabbing it on with this really cut up rough brush and then softening it up a bit now i want to add back some highlight so i go ahead and i take a really sort of bright brass color a copper color use this old brush that's got all these cuts on it and it's very stiff and you can see here you can see how the the light brass the light copper really makes this piece stand out because we've done so much marring to it and i'm going to go back through and use uh the black wash the uh, brown wash and uh, a little white wash that i build up myself which is just some of the chrome color and go through it now i noticed that the chrome was looking a like it needed something so i went ahead and got some bright silver and did the same thing that i did to the visor there where I've sort of brightened it up to make it look like, you know, on the edges it would be scuffed more. And then again, I went ahead and went all over the helmet, even the brass color, the copper color, with some white. And then it was just a time to put a nice thick coat of clear coat, and this is a satin clear coat, so it could keep everything the way I wanted it.
Now, how this was de designed by Villainous Prop Shop is pretty awesome. These snap in really, really well, and I'm not going to glue them. I'm not going to add any kind of hot glue or super glue. Now you could, but let's say you're going to a convention and you're going to be packing this in your suitcase. It takes up a lot more room when you've got both these antlers on. Whereas if you just put them on like that and they really stick in there hard, they're not coming out. See how much room you're going to save? And there it is. I am super, super happy with how this guy came out. Natural looking horns, the metal everything but it wasn't done i wanted it to have more of a natural look to it in looking at some of the viking helmets i saw they had you know fur and things like that so that's what i was going for so i bought some you know cheap faux fur and put it on and i was not very happy with it to be honest it looked uh well it looked too new you got this weathered helmet and you got this glossy black fake fear fur <laughs> so i went ahead and said i needed to do something to make this thing look a little bit more natural but first i just glued the fake fur on i just used some straight super glue again links in below for everything and this stuff held it on really well it also held on the fur to my fingers very well uh, i was picking uh, black fur off of my fingers for days it seemed so I said, I'm going to actually weather this. So this is the Tamiya dry uh, kit. Unfortunately, I ruined this kit because I got each one of those things wet. So now it's more of a paste. So don't do that when you buy, if you buy these. I love these things. But I went ahead and I just got this stuff on my fingers. And I went through and uh, since it's also a little greasy because of it got getting wet... It's making the hair look a little greasy. It's making it look like it's uh, got some different tones to it. Uh, it's knocking that black down. And I'm also bringing brown in uh, and some of the black that's in there, but even more of the brown because in this, I'm getting a little bit more brown from the antlers. But adding these different tones and sort of just working the hair and moving it around my fingers, I'm aging it. It looked really silly when it was just super, super black. But now that it's got this sort of dingy look and this dirty look to it, uh, and it wasn't like a, a new goat <laughs> with that gray hair, it's an old goat, it really has a lot cooler look to it. And there it is, super happy with how this came out. So remember, that is the key thing. Build up multiple layers, let it dry, try to get organic with it by not, uh, you know, following set patterns. But the key thing is build up those layers. And don't get discouraged if it starts looking weird. I'm sure there were multiple times in different stages of this painting process where you were thinking, Kevin, I, I think, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, Sometimes I don't know what I'm doing. I'm seeing if a technique's going to work, and sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Then we have to sort of recalculate and get back on track. But I am super, super happy with how this came out. If you are and you want to see the next video, which is going to be padding and fans, go ahead and click like and subscribe and hit that little bell to know when it comes out. I want to thank you guys for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Have a great day.